Hi, I'm Linda Norman. I'm a watercolor artist here in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. Thank you for joining me today as I unbox my uh, latest parcel from Watercolor Online. Michael Solovyev's uh, beautiful products have arrived and I can hardly wait to open the package and share them with you. Uh, the Master Choice Baohong paper in a block. Now, I've used Baohong before. Uh, in looser sheets and, and taped it down to um, to a, a harder surface and it's been lovely. Uh, this is one of the papers that Michael uh, recommends and has available. This is a 140 pound 300 GSM and it is a 15 and 3 quarter by 15 and 3 quarter square block which is exciting for me. I've, I have not typically painted on square before. So this is going to be really, really uh, exciting to do. And maybe uh, maybe will encourage me to uh, step out a little bit from my typical landscapes and birches. I don't know. We'll see where this, we'll see where this takes me. Uh, but I am excited for, uh, for the possibilities, that's for sure. So because it's a block, we've talked about that before, the, the paper will be secured on all four sides and there should be uh, a little opening, a little slit where you can stick a palette knife in when you're finished painting to remove the paper from the block. Painting on a block is, is so, um, so wonderful. You can travel with it and you don't have to worry about extra masking tapes and, and uh, surfaces, hard uh, backing surfaces to paint on. And so this is, so it's an off-white paper. It feels, it feels fairly smooth. It says rough, 100% cotton, mold made, pH neutral, chlorine free, and a natural gelatin sizing used on it. It feels gorgeous. It feels, it feels like, um, oh, it just feels so rich and, and lovely. I can hardly wait to put some paint on it. So this has, it has a white glue around the edge and it does tell you here, I remember the first time I ever opened a block, I had no clue. I couldn't figure out what to do with it. Um, so it tells you open here. So. And, which is helpful because this is white glue. It's sometimes hard to see, but there is a little, a little opening in the glue, and you can. That was um, easy with the. So this is a, a protective sheet. See, learn something new every day. Uh, most of the other blocks that I've used have never have not had a protective sheet. Now I get to see. It is a whiter paper and a much rougher texture. So even more exciting for me because that's, uh, that's my go-to. I'm excited to, to, uh, to try this. Now my paints have been sitting uh, with a bit of moisture on them, getting nice and juicy. And I'm just gonna attempt a real quick painting or the basis of a painting just to see what's going to happen with with um, with this paper. And because it's on a block, I can wet the page. And it should um, it should soak in some of that water it will buckle up a tiny bit but if I leave it on the block until the painting has dried it should settle right back down now I didn't take time on this because I'm just so excited to try it to tape the edges normally I would take um, some of the um, solo tape that I use it's again a, it's a watercolor online product from Michael Solovyev uh, and it's a masking tape that I uh, really adore using on watercolor paper. And I would tape the edges just so that my design uh, 
has a bit of a border, but like I say, I'm very excited to get this started. So I didn't didn't worry about that today. And I'm going to just sometimes I, I don't worry about filling the whole surface with water. And I'm not not really all that careful usually about getting the amounts of water even. Got a little little fuzzy on there. Um, because I like the, ha the thought of maybe a little bit of the white of the paper popping through here and there, uh, sort of a little surprise. And that's that's one of the things I do love about watercolor painting is that there are surprises. And it, and if you um, if you approach your painting aware of that and and able to appreciate that um, things can can really um, become a magical I, th I think I find that just the way it is so uh, a typical painting similar to the one we did the other day I will put in some a little bit of yellow just to get some sunlight happening bring it up into a sky down into a maybe a valley or something here. I have this beautiful color called Moon Glow. Uh, it's a Daniel Smith color and I, I just adore it. It's uh, gorgeous purples. Let's throw a little bit of that and make this a little bit. Uh, I'm loving how this paper is taking to the pigment and the and the water and the feel of the brush. Um, because I use my paints, I call it juicy. Lots of water in my palette on the surface of the paints. It, it makes the paints nice and and lovely and sticky. And um, I don't need to dig my brush in to get this get the pigment on my brush. I just touch the surface, and it gives me enough pigment to um, to get on my page and the moon glow is moon glow is a granulating color more so than some other uh, other Daniel Smith colors but um, I do love how it's interacting with the paper and I'm really loving how Oftentimes, putting a dark color on a piece of paper, especially wet, uh, if you if you start it in the middle of the page, you will sometimes get a hard line that's that's hard to take off. But this doesn't seem to be doing that, and it's it is um, granulating and blending in. So that is uh, that is really really beautiful. I'm going to put in just a little bit of Mayan dark blue because I love how that goes with with the uh, the moon glow and the um, quinacridone gold. So the yellow I used was quinacridone gold. Mayan dark blue is is um, is quite beautiful for uh, for moody skies. You can see how that is just the moisture on the page is is just taking that pigment and at the edge where I didn't have as much moisture it's left a little bit of a um, a textured area which I just love as well so I like to keep most of my lines going horizontal so this paper has uh, it has buckled. You can see that, I'm sure. It has held the moisture amazingly well. And that natural sizing, I'll have to research that more. I don't know what that means, what that is made of. But it seems to be... Um, it seems to be loving the granulation and, and the um, the pigment that is on the page. Yeah, that is that is absolutely gorgeous. I can see why Michael recommends this paper. It is really, really lovely. I'm going to try because one of the things I do like to do with 
with paints is to see how how the pigments lift from your page. And this is often how I make my clouds. I'll do some random random dabbing to form a few clouds happening here. And these uh, these bits of paper towel wadded up in your hand are really uh, really helpful for uh, areas where if the pigment and the paper and the water are kind of creating some things that that maybe make some harsh edges or are uh, blossoming and you don't want that in your painting a light touch with a paper towel is uh, is all it takes sometimes to just and as long as your paper is still damp which this is just holding that that moisture it's staying damp as long as there's still dampness, things will continue to move slightly and soften. So you can keep that in mind. Um, yes, I can see where. Um, I can see, see where Michael absolutely loves this paper. It is delightful. Absolutely delightful. One of the next things I want to do quickly is to. For me, it's important for the pigments to sit to some extent on the surface, but also to be absorbed as well. And so often in my paintings, I will put trees and rocks and shrubbery, and that involves um, sometimes just getting some, some really good pigment in, nice and thick. We'll put a little bit of Mayan dark blue. Another one of my all-time favorites is undersea green, and I'm going to use that just just because rocks and 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 ground areas aren't a solid color, right? So we're going to throw a bit of that in there. And then I'm going to go into my trusty quinacridone gold. Because I've got quinacridone gold in the sky and Mayan dark blue in the sky, I like to imitate those colors uh, again in my in my groundwork. And if they have, if they show up nice and bright every now and then, I, I just love that. That's a nice little um, little surprise for. Uh, For the painting. And we're just going to put some, maybe a bit of a mountain in the background here. And maybe a little bit of a mountain a little bit lower on this side. There's still some moisture on the paper, so it's going to be able to take those those trees and, and soften them a tiny bit as, as they go up into the hill, hill area. And, and then I like to have a little bit of perhaps some blue just for the sake of quickness here. I'll do a little bit of blue for a lake, a lake shore. So now, what I want to look for is the removability. Some, pig some pigments are staining, some are not. And sometimes you just want to be able to take some of that pigment out and lighten it. And this is working really well for that. You can see where I'm able to pull away a lot of the color if I wanted to. This part up here I think will become shrubbery. But what I also want to check out now is... Let's try this piece. Now that this section down here with the thicker pigment has had a moment to settle and, and sort of absorb into the paper, I want to try uh, 
testing out some some making some shapes so this paper feels a bit harder than some of the others some of the arch papers or um, fluid uh, 100 uh, different brands but you can see where you can pull away and shape rocks with a with a with a harder edge and a little pile of rocks in the corner and some shrubbery on top if you can see that And then I will go in with a um, a little bit of a firmer brush to pull away. Oh, it's gone. Let's try this little guy. make the shoreline yeah so it's it's still able to pull away even though it's been sitting for a little bit I like that and I can go in and basically draw with a with a, a dry brush it's kind of like drawing it's like shaping your shaping your areas and I love that it allows the paints to granulate that's just uh, a thing of great beauty brushes but this one will work just as well and sometimes I like to put a little bit of indication of treetops if the paper is still damp as it is those tree trunks will soften and they will look like they're off in a distance which will be great I'll take a one of the solo smaller brushes. I mentioned earlier they come to a nice sharp point so you can go in with that and, um, and, and bring in some some nice lines. You can make some trees. There are just some some beautiful things that you can do with this. So all in all I would say that uh, I am 100% happy with my latest package of, of uh, materials from Watercolor Online, Michael Solovyev Studios. Um, can't wait to try them more. Thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to my channel. Visit my website, bandrystudio.com. That's B-A-N-D-R-A-O-I studio.com.